Elizabeth Anderson is an Indianapolis police officer who has a special appreciation for her body armor after being shot five times when she responded to a shooting in May of 2021. A 21-year-old man shot two of his neighbors. One of them was a 61-year-old woman. The other one was a 38-year-old man. But IMPD said the shooting didn't seem to be provoked and was not preceded by a disturbance. The woman that he shot was able to drive a short distance away, but when another woman tried to help her, the suspect drove his car intentionally into the helper. The perpetrator then drove on, striking three other vehicles. Well, when officers arrived at the scene, they attempted to stop the suspect, who got out of his vehicle, shot at the officers, then got back into his car and led police on a chase. When he eventually stopped, officers and the subject began exchanging gunfire. During the gunfire, Officer Iverson was shot five times, twice in the right arm, twice in her left leg, and another one on her ballistic resistant vest just below her body camera. She was taken to Methodist Hospital where she was found to be in good condition, alert and talking. The two-year veteran was released that evening and was expected to fully recover from her injuries. Now, the suspect also uh, was shot in the exchange of gunfire, and he was transported to Eskenazi Hospital, where he was arrested and charged with three counts of attempted murder, aggravated battery, criminal recklessness, and resisting law enforcement. Now, I imagine that Officer Iveson will always check her body armor before beginning a shift and that she's very, very grateful that it has already saved her life. And in this video, we're going to see the importance of having armor that protects us and the importance of putting it on. Hi, I'm Jim Taylor. Welcome to In Favor Resources and to this third video in this teaching series entitled, We Are an Army in Indiana. It's based on uh, a short prophecy by Chuck Pierce that says, you are an army in Indiana. So we're drawing comparisons from armies in history and in America and Israel and, and, and in Indiana and, and asking saying, and saying, it's, if it's true about those armies, it's true about our army. So be sure and download the handout from InFavorResources.com. You're looking for the one for the third video entitled, In Indiana, We Wear Protective Armor. We wear protective armor. That's declaration number two. Now, the first one from the last video was, In Indiana, We Obey Our Commander. Today, we're looking at, In Indiana, We Wear Protective Armor. So, no soldier goes into battle undressed. And the battle armor of a Roman soldier is reflected in Paul's description of our spiritual armor in Christ in Ephesians chapter 6. Look at your handout. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. Therefore, again, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground and after you have done everything, to stand. And now the pieces of armor. Stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one, and take the helmet of salvation. And then the sword of the Spirit we'll talk about next week when we talk about our weapons. So, a shorter and similar description recurs in 1 Thessalonians 5. Since we belong to the day, let us be sober, putting on faith and love as a breastplate and the hope of salvation as a helmet. And this word came from Jeremiah. Prepare your shields, both large and small, and march out for battle. Harness the horses, mount the steeds, Take your positions with helmets on. Polish your spears. Put on your armor. Now, in Indiana, we are an army. We are fighting a spiritual battle. And we are equipped with or clothed in divinely desi designed protective armor. 
Alan Redpath wrote this. It's on your handout. I observe, as I'm sure you have, that there is no armor for the back of the Christian, no provision for running away from the enemy. It is all for the front. Retreat is not considered a possibility for the child of God. We are to stand our ground. And the great Charles Spurgeon said, You are to put on the heavenly armor in order that you may stand, and you will need it to maintain the position in which your captain, your commander, has placed you. We are not merely to defend, but also to assail. It is not enough that you are not conquered. You have to conquer. Ours, therefore, is a stern conflict, standing and withstanding. And we shall want all the armor from the Divine Magazine, all the strength from the mighty God of Jacob. And as the old hymn put it, Stand up, stand up for Jesus. Stand in his strength alone. The arm of flesh will fail you. You dare not trust your own. Put on the gospel armor. Each piece put on with prayer. And then, when duty calls, or danger, be never wanting there. We always leave some space on the handout there for applications and implications for thoughts and questions, asking how can we apply this to ourselves and to Indiana. So did you ever play a sport or have a job that required you to wear a particular kind of clothing, either uh, as a uniform or for protection? And why was it important that you be appropriately dressed for that task? I mean, what were the advantages if you did and the disadvantages of the dangers if you didn't? Take that catcher at home plate. He's got the mask on to protect himself from those 100-mile-an-hour fastballs. He's, he's got that chest pad on so he doesn't break a rib. Uh, what about working in a dangerous laboratory with chemicals that are harmful? You wouldn't even go into the room without your hazmat suit on, protecting you, your your oxygen, so that... I mean, why in the world would we expose ourselves to danger or even death when there's perfect protective gear available to us? So imagine yourself as a soldier, a real soldier, an actual army going into a literal battle. And if you're a veteran, you've already done this. And I encourage you to share some of your experiences. If you know a veteran, ask them to share with you. But Take those items mentioned in Ephesians chapter 6. I mean, how would each one of those serve to protect you from the bullets and the bombs? I mean, what specific danger would you face if you omitted even one of those pieces of armor? And then remember that we are all spiritual soldiers fighting in heavenly battles. So don't forget to put on the armor. And heavenly armor will enter the land. The battle belongs to the Lord. No weapon formed against us will stand. The battle belongs to the Lord. So, next video, declaration number three. Because we are an army in Indiana, we wield powerful weapons. Hope to see you then.